Israel's current military campaign in Gaza, Operation Protective Edge, started on July 8th. The next day, Vice News crossed into Gaza to get a first-hand look at the situation. We're in Gaza City right now. Uh, we just arrived. Israeli ships have been shelling it from the sea. It's been getting hit hard from the air. There's a bit of a lull right now, but as you can see, the streets are completely deserted. Everyone's pretty much scared to come out of their homes right now, and they're expecting it to get worse tonight. We're in an area called Sheikh Radwan, which is home to a lot of Hamas leaders. So they hit neighborhoods like this very hard. The leaders go underground, but their houses still get blown up. We were just driving around, there was sirens speeding. What we're seeing right now is there's an attack on a car. Uh, we've got ambulances here. We've got people crowding in the streets. What, what happened? What, when did this It was an Israeli warplane flying right over where we were standing. <laughs> Fucking shit. Don't worry, don't worry. The fuck? So we're seeing. So what we're seeing right now is, you know, the cycle cycle of attacks. The car gets bombed here half an hour ago. Hamas sends rockets out, like we just saw right here. I think I counted one, two, three, four, five, maybe four, maybe five, maybe six. Seven, seven, I'm telling seven, and uh, just keeps going and going and escalating and escalating. No sign of stopping right now. You're not scared right now. I'm scared. I'm scared, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're okay. Allah ma'na. Allah ma'na. We're the enemies in the jinn, they killed them in the fire. يعني مهما يعملوا فينا احنا من همهمش يعني هم هالقد في الملاجئ متخبيين احنا زي ما تشيء. So we just left the site of that car that was struck. Three people were killed in it, and we're told that those three people were commanders um, in Islamic Jihad, which is one of the militant groups here. This is one of the precision strikes that Israel talks about, but that was in a, in an area where there were a lot of civilians. And in Gaza, you know, it's one of the most densely populated areas in the world. So a lot, of, a lot of the times you have these strikes, um, there are civilians very close by, and some of them get killed as well. So we're at the main hospital right now in Gaza. We heard it was a little quiet yesterday, but today it's been completely jam-packed. You know, casualties coming in all the time. Uh, they're running low on supplies, but as you can see here, uh, it's also sort of a media circus. Everyone knows that this is the place to go when you want to sort of cover what's going on here. See, there's a really young child right there as well. Five years male patient a case of due to the explosive injury. Uh, there is severe head trauma, brain uh, brain edema. There is also many cases uh, young adult male other and he's a severe lung injury. We have no empty bed for the new cases. These four, uh, five cases just come here to uh, in the uh, previous two hours. Really, we are very, very sad. As you, as, as you see, there is a child, five years, and just our, there is another child. But uh, this is our life. Yeah. We must do that. And what's the situation been like? How is everyone coping with this? You see the situation is really disastrous. Everything you see, demolished houses everywhere, and the injuries, and you see, they said there's terrorists. This is uh, something unbelievable to see kids like this, as they, they call a terrorist. We know there have been strong words from yes. both sides, from, yes. from government here yes. and from the Israeli government. Yes. Are you expecting the situation to get worse? Are you expecting it to get better? I hopefully, you know, to mm -hmm. be stopped like for our, the Israel, they know this is not going to make a peace in the future. Mm -hmm. We want this cycle of revenge to be stopped. They want, we want those people to be understand this is not making peace. If they're thinking about peace and they're talking about peace, we should stop and we should sit, sit, sit on one table to talk. We went to see how the few people still out in the street were coping with the attacks. <laughs> So does it feel different from what happened two years ago? You know, you're a young man. A lot of the people in the resistance are young men. Is there pressure on you, on your friends, to join any of these resistance movements? 
يعني مش لازم كل الشباب يكونوا مقاومين يعني يعني لكل واحد له شغلانه كل واحد مش كلنا بدنا نشتغل مقاومين يعني تخلي غزه كلها مقاومين دول المقاومه لهم خطه بدنا نعيش as soon as it got dark the attack started to intensify So it was a really long night. Uh, bombing sort of continued throughout. We tried to get some sleep around 4 or 5 a.m. There was a really loud blast around 6. It's a little calmer today. We heard a few blasts already this morning. Um, so we're going to go into the city and sort of see what damage has been done throughout the course of the night. It's a hard place for a reporter to do their job. It's especially hard for Mo Man Faiz. Very, very nice to meet you. Thank you. He lost both his legs in an Israeli airstrike a few years ago, and he's still at it. We're in the east of Gaza City right now. Uh, we're about to go see um, and talk to a man whose house was just destroyed. This right here used to be a house. The whole thing is completely leveled. So this is a good signal to get the fuck out of it, because yeah. it means they're going to hit the house. Okay, we should, we should go. I don't, I don't like the sound of that drone. Okay. okay. The entire time we were, we were filming at that house, you could hear the buzzing of the drones. It's, it's really persistent, it's continuous, it's, it was loud. Uh, the loudest I've heard it since I've been here, I think. It's known for being an area that where a lot of members of the resistance live. You know, that could have been a warning shot. And the feeling there was just, we had to, we had to go. How did you feel at the house that we were just at? Because I was ready to leave. هو طبيعي انا قبل هيك صار عليه استهداف يعني تقريبا تعودنا على الامور هذه على امور الزنانات والطيارات والقصف وانه يكون في المكان اللي احنا فيه يصير في قصف ثاني علينا تعودنا على هيك امور وكلها احنا سايبينها توكيل على الله على ربنا يعني وان شاء الله يعني بيصير اي مكروه لاي حدا Can you tell us about what happened to you? كنت بعمل تقرير عن البضائع العالقة عن ال في ال الجانب الإسرائيلي، فتم استهدافي بشكل مباشر بشكل مباشر طارت استطلاع. Were you scared to pick up a camera again? هو ال ال الموضوع هذا صار مرتبط يعني بالإنسان، فبيقدرش يتخلى عنه من الصعب جدا إنه يتخلى عنه حتى لو صار في إيش ما صار بيقدرش يعني يتخلى عن الموضوع هذا. That night, we wanted to get the best view we could of the assault on Gaza. The safest place we found was the 15th floor of a media building, where we stayed up all night watching bombs drop with local journalists. We're in a media building right now. We've been here most of the night. We're hearing, you know, a lot of shelling. It's, it's very intermittent, so Sometimes we're not seeing where it's hitting, other times you're seeing sort of fireballs pop up. Uh, we're here with a bunch of Palestinian journalists, they've been up for 20 hours, they say the past few days they've rarely slept, they're filming the entire thing. Uh, we've been told not to leave, there was a, a, a driver of a journalist's car who was struck uh, a few hours ago. Uh, we don't think we're going to sleep, and it's just sort of pounding, pounding, pounding. It'll be quiet for half an hour and then you'll hear either a plane strike, you can tell sometimes when it's from the ships because it's sort of like a duh, 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 and we don't know when it's going to end. Uh, Jesus this. Christ. This. Like, I'm trying to understand how it feels to be, to be a Gaza and you see Hamas doing these attacks. But you know that when they attack, more attacks from the Israelis will come. Uh, I feel uh, proud that uh, we have uh, a small movement and they, uh, they fight the Israeli army like, uh, like a big uh, country. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if Hamas stopped attacking, the Israelis would stop attacking? Actually, no. Yeah. Uh, I think so. You think no. so? Mm -hmm. No. After, after three days, yeah. uh, I think. Holy shit.
Yeah, those are the ships flying right now. You can see this big building right here, the ambulance in front of it, that's our hotel. We heard a few booms, I saw one of the incoming shells come in. Apparently it hit the back area of the hotel. There's something right there. Look, 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 look. Watch it, watch it. Look, look. Fuck. Holy shit. They just hit the hotel. The shell didn't actually hit the hotel, but struck the port behind it. We saw outgoing fire from the area earlier. You can see over here, there's still ambulance trucks. That's where that big fire was earlier tonight. And it looks like one of the shells struck literally 10 meters away from the patio in the hotel where we ate dinner uh, what, eight hours ago? We're going back to the hotel because they want us away from the patio. But that's, that's where it is here. This is supposed to be a safe area. It's where a lot of foreign journalists stay, and, and they know that. And this is the one area you're supposed to be safe in, in Gaza. But it's like we keep hearing when we ask this question, are we safe here? There's nowhere safe in Gaza right now.